Welcome to worship today from Invergowrie and from the Karst churches. Today we're filming in various locations around the parishes and there's a reason for that and that is we're going on a journey. But first, a verse to accompany our service today from Luke's Gospel. At that time, Emperor Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the Roman Empire. When this first census took place, Quirinius was the governor of Syria. Everyone then went to register himself, each to his hometown. On my way. Isaiah says, a voice cries out, prepare in the wilderness a road for the Lord, clear the way in the desert for our God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you today for all those who prepared the way for your coming, all who made a straight path in the wilderness so that the hearts of many were ready to receive you. We praise you for Mary and Joseph, for their obedience to your call, their confidence in your purpose, their faith that with you nothing is impossible. You call us to prepare your way in turn. Gladly we respond. Lord Jesus Christ, help us to make a straight path in the wilderness so that the hearts of many may receive you today. Help us to prepare your way. In your name we ask it as we pray together the words of Jesus. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Hello, young ones. Advent, it is the time when Christmas is coming ever closer. If you have an Advent wreath, you will have two candles burning on it from today. We are on a journey theme. People are moving in order to get there for Christmas. Here is a typical picture of Mary and Joseph on the road to Bethlehem. Now, if you look at it, what can you see? 
Well, now you can see Mary, you can see Joseph, you can see the donkey, you can see where they are on their journey. But what is missing? Think about it. Where are all the many, many people? If a census had been called and everyone had to be counted and registered, why are there no pictures of all the other people who also had to go and be counted? Why have we forgotten about all the other people? I tell you, it is almost impossible to find any pictures with so many other people in. Well, here is one where we see there are loads of people twirling around. I had to search very hard to find that one. Loads of people, a real chaos. If we looked in our time for where people, loads of them, pile together and want to travel, look at this picture. Now, it would be so much fun if we could all be together to all squash into a small space close up to each other and see for how long we would all find a comfortable space and then fall apart because it's far too much with laughter tumbling over each other. Well, at the moment with COVID, we better all keep a safe distance. But look at that picture of a bus where loads of people piled in. Goodness, that does not look comfortable. On our advent calendar, that is getting fuller too. Let's see who has arrived yet. That is not crowded yet, but I promise you, this will be really crowded come Christmas. So today, think of crowded journeys and think Mary and Joseph, right among them, there in the crowd, trying to find their own way. That is what I think it really must have been, because there were so many on their way to be counted. Crowded journeys. Today, everyone on the move. You've been born in a royal palace and called your majesty Worn a crown of diamonds and lived in luxury But he was born in a dirty stable and laid on a bed of hay Not too many welcomed him on the very first Christmas day He is down to earth, he is down to earth the one who changed the world forever is down to earth. He could have been friends with rich and famous, with big celebrities. Had anything he wanted, living as he pleased, but he made friends. Sick and with the lame. He helped them with their problems and he called them all by name. He is down to earth, he is down to earth. The one who changed the world forever is down to earth. His servants would have bowed and said, Your wish is my command. But he wore the crown of thorns, gave everything he had. He gave his life that we might know the great love of his dad. He is down to earth, he is down to earth. The one who changed the world forever is down to earth. He is down to earth, he is down to earth. The one who changed the world forever is down to
we pray. God of faithfulness and truth, you sent your servant John the Baptist to preach in the desert and summon the people to repentance. We too turn to you and confess our sins, seeking your promised forgiveness. Make us and all things new, that in the wilderness of our hearts, we too may prepare a way over which your Son may walk. May we also know your coming and experience your love. Born a baby, died a king, risen wonderful and glorious. Our God at home on earth and in heaven. Amen. Comfort my people, says our God. Comfort them. Encourage the people of Jerusalem. Tell them they have suffered long enough and their sins are now forgiven. I have punished them in full for all their sin. A voice cries out, Prepare in the wilderness a road for the Lord. Clear the way in the desert for our God. Fill every valley, level every mountain. The hills will become a plain and the rough country will be made smooth. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and the whole human race will see it. The Lord himself has promised this. A voice cries out, proclaim a message. What message shall I proclaim, I ask? Proclaim that all human beings are like grass. They last no longer than wild flowers. Grass withers and flowers fade when the Lord sends the wind blowing over them. People are no more enduring than grass. Yes, grass withers and flowers fade, but the word of God endures forever. Jerusalem, go up on a high mountain and proclaim the good news. Call out with a loud voice, Zion. Announce the good news. Speak out and do not be afraid. Tell the towns of Judah that their God is coming. The sovereign Lord is coming to rule with power, bringing with him the people he has rescued. He will take care of his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs together and carry them in his arms. He will gently lead the mothers. Comfort, comfort now my people. Speak of peace, so says your God. Comfort those who sit in darkness, burdened by a heavy load. Through Jerusalem away, God shall take away your shame. Now get ready to recover, guilt and suffering are over. Hear the devil's proclamation in the desert far and near, calling all to true repentance. Let us praise the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to the help of his people and has set them free. He has provided for us a mighty saviour, a descendant of his servant David. He promised through his holy prophets long ago that he would save us from our enemies, from the power of all those who hate us. He said he would show mercy to our ancestors and remember his sacred covenant. With a solemn oath to our ancestor Abraham, he promised to rescue us from our enemies and allow us to serve him without fear, so that we might be holy and righteous before him all the days of our life. You, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High God. You will go ahead of the Lord to prepare his road for him, to tell his people that they will be saved by having their sins forgiven. Our God is merciful and tender. 
He will cause the bright dawn of salvation to rise on us and to shine from heaven on all those who live in the dark shadow of death to guide our steps and the path of peace. I invite you to cast your minds back to what seems like a long, long time ago, back in the days before social distancing, when you might sometimes find yourself in a press of people crowding all around you. The stampede of Black Friday, high streets filled so you could hardly move, fully booked restaurants with tables up against each other, not a seat to be had at the school Christmas service. Christmas is often a busy, crowded time of year. Some long to be back there, others relieved that's no longer the case. But probably all of us are concerned at what might be to come. And then there are the journeys. This year, those who are hoping to travel are worried. Lots of people trying to get home for Christmas, to see loved ones perhaps. Probably fewer this year jetting off into the sun or going skiing. I expect, though, there will still be a lot of people on the move, even if it's not as many as there would have been the first Christmas. Mary and Joseph. They lived in the town of Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea, some 80 miles away. The journey there of Mary and Joseph must be one of the most depicted in history but they weren't alone. We're told the census took place across the Roman Empire, although there's no other evidence of it than Luke chapter two. Maybe it didn't happen everywhere. Maybe it was piloted in Palestine. Maybe the people there were told it was happening everywhere, but actually that was just a ruse to make them comply. As we know, not all the details of the Christmas story add up properly. The most obvious problem is that Quirinius was not governor of Syria during Augustus's time as Roman Emperor. 
recorded later by different people, the details of the story don't seem to be the most important. Yet, they teach us so much about how God chose to come and be born among us. Because of the census, which required every man to take his family to his birthplace, Joseph took Mary to Bethlehem, a small town which could not cope with all its exiles now returning. At the Bethel Inn, Jacob and Benny are discussing the situation. This is the busiest we've ever been, and the shortest staff we've ever been. How many folk do you have cleaning the hotel, Benny? Just myself. How come? Where's Jeremiah? He's had to go to register at Cana. But what about Martha? She's from here. But her husband's from Capernaum. She's had to go to register with him there. So you're making all the beds yourself? I am. I don't want to see another pair of sheets as long as I live. How are they coping in the kitchen? Okay, I think. We just keep getting asked for funny food. What like? Well, there's a couple from Syria expect kebabs for their breakfast. And there's an old man from the Jordan Valley who keeps asking for locusts and wild honey. So what do you do? We pretend we don't hear them and give everybody a bowl of porridge. So we're definitely fully booked. Absolutely. Standing room only. Why do you ask? It's just we've got a couple at the door who are desperate for somewhere to stay. I don't have the heart to turn them away. Well, I'll tell them. But the woman's pregnant. She looks as if she could have her baby at any time. Jacob, we're fully booked. But surely there's somewhere we could put them. Where? Where, indeed. There was no room at the inn, because so many people were on the move. Yet when we depict the journey, whether in art, drama or song, we show Mary and Joseph on their own with their little donkey, plodding towards Bethlehem. But the reason that they went was the same reason that so many other people would have been on the move too. The roads can't have been empty. They weren't so far behind that everyone else was happily ensconced in the inns, not just of Bethlehem, but every town and village before they got going. And guess what? Mary wouldn't have been the only pregnant woman on the move either. Just think of the movement of peoples we see in our times. Although it's unlikely that back in Palestine, around the year 0 AD, there would have been the requirement for families to go to. Too much chaos altogether. So if the story happened as we're told, Mary maybe went along because she was a new bride, wanted to be with her husband, or because there was scandal and unpleasantness about them in Nazareth, and they wanted to leave that behind. Matthew's account of the birth of Jesus knows nothing, either of the census or of the manger. But that doesn't matter very much. We're thinking of journeys, and I'm thinking today that everyone was on a journey. Luke records the first journeys of Mary and Joseph, and Matthew the later ones. Luke has the shepherds on their journey, Matthew the wise men. People on the move, journeying, and we don't always know exactly where to, and neither did they. So not just Mary and Joseph, but everyone was on the move that first Christmas, back to their hometowns, visiting or meeting up with family they perhaps hadn't seen for a while. Did Joseph still have cousins in Bethlehem? Perhaps they were all gone, but surely other family members must have had to make the journey too. Maybe Mary and Joseph really were well behind, or just keeping a low profile. Travelling to be counted and pay your taxes, and then back home again. Changed or unchanged, you rarely travel without being changed by it, especially if it's a pilgrimage back to your home territory or meeting up with long-lost cousins. But life-shattering experiences took place in Bethlehem, so much so that Mary and Joseph didn't go back home for years. The wise men went home by a different route, and the shepherds went back in the middle of the night singing praises to God for all they'd seen and heard. Most of us had been on the move or expected visitors sometime over the Christmas period. But is it just about physical journeys? We journey to Bethlehem, to the manger. We've begun to add characters. 
to our Advent Nativity scene here. A few sheep, a cow, some stars, shepherd. You opening your Advent calendars too? Or burning a candle? We have had our first Christmas fair and carol singing, so the journey's begun. But where is it taking us? What will we experience? Will we find the manger empty or full? Will we feel threatened? Will we know peace? Will joy take us unawares? Our reading from Isaiah, referred to again by Zechariah in Luke, spoke of building a great motorway through the hill country. Fill every valley, level every mountain, the hills will become a plain and the rough country will be made smooth. For God, our God, is coming. A wide, easy road to travel. That's perhaps in contrast to what Jesus said that we sometimes read at this time of year too. Do your best to go in through the narrow door, he said, and spoke of the way they are being hard. Yet people will come, he said, from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and sit down at the feast of the kingdom of God. So lots of people will come, again many people on the move. But it's not so easy to enter. You have to bow down low to get in that stable door. Everyone was on the move that first Christmas, but hardly anyone noticed the events that were happening and how God slipped in beside us. Only those who were awake, those who were searching, those who recognised angels, those who gave hospitality, and of course, those who felt threatened and tried to kill. And the rest slept on, not knowing for now what was happening. Everyone's on a journey, through life if nothing else. Sometimes someone prepares the road and makes the way easy for us. Other times it's hard. As we journey to Christmas, how do we manage not to let it all simply slide over us and pass us by for yet another year? caught up in the worries and concerns of this year by seeking the encounter, looking and expecting that God will come not just to the world, but even to us by staying awake. It's different from with Santa, who only comes if you're asleep. That doesn't mean we can't close our eyes. Each time Joseph met the angel, it was in his dream. But watching, waiting, welcoming. So let's prepare the way, making a way in ourselves for God to come in. Open the door, clear away the wilderness and the hills and valleys that we hide in. Instead, proclaim the good news to yourself and to others that God is coming. Speak out and don't be afraid. Open yourself wide that God might come in in friend and stranger, in angel and messenger. Do not be afraid. He brings joy. God surprises earth with heaven coming here on Christmas Day. Let's pray. Lord God, as we read the Christmas story, we see you in surprising places, small, insignificant places, humble, unimagined places and still you come and we see you in the strangest of places give us the courage to take Jesus to the surprising places of our world oh God as we read the Christmas story we see you using surprising people of all sorts to work and to witness for you and still, you use surprising people. Give us open minds, grant us imagination and vision that we may continue to touch the lives of surprising people and be touched by them. You come among us in surprising ways. In Jesus, we see you in birth, life, suffering and death, among the outcasts and refugees, with women and children, 
caring for the sick, upholding justice, challenging the establishment, affirming and encouraging, forgiving and renewing. And still, you come among us in birth, life, suffering and death, and we take a quiet time to remember others and offer you our prayers. In the lives of your followers, through the Holy Spirit, keep coming into lives and surprising the poor, the sick, the lonely, the bereaved, the weak, the outcast, the stranger, and us. God surprises earth with heaven, coming here on Christmas Day. O oh God, keep coming into our lives. Surprise us again and again and again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We've thought about everyone on the move, many journeys. And now we ourselves get on the move. We go into this world to love and serve our Lord Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and those around you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.